Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I'm Matt Schultz, your host tonight, joined by Austin Cummings. Hi, Matt. Hi. <laughs> and Jordan Weiner is back. Hey, good to be back. And I'm finally outnumbered as the only Midwesterner uh, currently on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's huge. The West Coasters have taken over again. <laughs> right. We have, so, we have so much more day left over here. We got, we got hours more, two, in fact. So, I'm technically, uh, we're closer to Nintendo. You know, we're closer to the, uh, oh, yes. the mothership. <laughs> the, the source. So. <laughs> That's actually not funny, Austin, because I typically will, as I'm about to go to bed, I'm like, oh, Austin just logged on. He's playing a game now. Like, I want to mm-hmm. play. Like, I, I just do that up. to toy. Once I see you log I off, know. I turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> just to get it in there and say, I'm squeaking in just a couple more hours. Look at me all That's the time. Me, I, 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 I kind of wish Nintendo would tell you when someone like left, you know, kind of like the old like door shutting AIM sound, you know, from oh, back in the day. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I would love it to just know people are gone instead of being like, did they leave yet? Let me go home. Uh, I have felt for the first time ever with that like social pressure because I've not been playing much Animal Crossing, but everybody is. And whenever I've the <laughs> only Animal Crossing I'm really doing is going to other people's islands and always feeling like a deep sense of shame about my island. And <laughs> oh, no. so whenever like everyone's playing it and then I'm playing not, that's like the first time I've been thinking about like, do I appear offline or do I like try to hide this thing or um, so that's where I'm at. I recently um, don't have a job anymore, but when I, when I did have a job, I confess that for the last couple of weeks there were definitely times where i would play animal crossing in the middle of the day and i when i would log on i'd be like are my coworkers also on playing <laughs> in which case we're good or like will someone right. know that i'm i just um, have slack so open true. but i'm actually just playing love that <laughs> jumping right in uh, aside from animal crossing have you all been playing anything else I have been desperately wanting to play Ring Fit Adventure, but I did not buy it before we were thrust into the current uh, world state. And so now my only option would be to pay $300 oh, no. from our reseller. Um, so that's what I haven't Worth been it. playing because I've been bumped. I did set up many alerts to tell me when it comes in stock, but you only have like a three minute window at like three yeah. in the morning every couple of weeks on Amazon and was the first it. So <laughs> I won't be playing that. Um, other, otherwise, we just started playing um, an indie game from a couple years ago, Return of the Obra Dinn, um, mm-hmm. which has been super cool and very different from what I normally play. Um, so that's the most recent thing. I've now, are you and your partner out. playing that like kind of together? Like one person? We are. Playing? Yep. Yeah, we're playing it together. It's too scary for either of us to play on our own. We've had to play it during it's not a horror uh, game per se. Hours. But, uh, there have been a couple of scares like and um, pirate pirate shanties. Yeah, it's got like boy. the creepy vibe. Hmm. We we are big scaredy cats. Like we had to play all of Undertale and Delta Rune like with the lights on during the day. Like anything that has like even a, <laughs> creepy, Undertale? a creepy vibe. <laughs> um, okay. I like yeah. it. I support that. That's good. There I'm are some really... creepy parts of Undertale. I could, yeah, we could sure. do a whole pod about Undertale. That one, <laughs> what hasn't already been discussed about the game, though. So but true. anyway, we'll, f- we'll find that angle. How about that dog? He's so cute. <laughs> the um, that that's awesome. That's a game I have not played. Would love to play, but I feel like playing it with a partner or someone else uh, less. So, although I do support like because of the you know, the scares necessarily, but more so just because of the great puzzle solving and you know detective work mm-hmm. that you're tasked with completing, having someone else there to trace those clues and mm-hmm. you know keep you focused i feel like would be so fun um it's like doing was, an escape room kind of yeah. um similar vibe yeah. so that that's been super fun we've only played a little bit but um excited to get more into that i like it yeah Did you I, have a similar similar vibe for real escape rooms where it's like okay i need all the <laughs> lights on i need the door <laughs> open <laughs> uh, real escape rooms i i dive right into the like the atmospheric yeah. element of it, but I don't know. Video uh, game, I don't the, know. Sure, I, it's all right. The last yeah, escape room I was in, I broke a piece of the room that was supposed oh, no. to be broken, oh, no. and the uh, item dropped behind the like, like the the wall, and so I had to uh-huh. break, get out of the room, <laughs> wave at the camera. Anyways, um, Austin, what have you been playing? <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear they let you out. I've been playing Streets of Rage four on the Switch, and 
Um, it's a series that I was not a Genesis owner back in the day. So, but the Sega Genesis collection on Switch, I experienced for the first time yeah. Streets of Rage one through three, uh, which was a totally fun way of playing those games. Also because you know the brawler genre. I feel I think we all have some touchstone with playing like the four player kind of beat 'em up left to right scrolling game, particularly that of IP such as like the Simpsons or the X Men arcade game mm-hmm. or uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like those pizza parlor experiences. You know, of of days of old, you may may have had. Uh, I used I think, to pretend I was playing them. I never had coins yeah. on me. <laughs> you're just playing <laughs> the just attract the mode and you just slam up. the button. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I bet you play great. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, but for this, I think my my memory is always that they're they're simple games, and though they control simply, certainly in the case of Streets of Rage, like there's a great emphasis on like positioning, making sure you and the thugs that you're fighting, the certain ones have a certain attack range and your characters move fairly deliberately so you can't just spam an attack button because you'll have some uh, like a few frames basically kind of like a a fighting game although it is simpler than that but of like where you will be exposed for them to counter more or less again it's like it is a brawler but because you your characters move fairly slowly uh, enemies each have a very distinct attack pattern you do have to gauge each scenario like okay i need to keep everyone in front of me I can't let people jump over me because it's too hard to try to, you know, uh, cover both directions. So it ends up being this good challenge. And I've really like been surprised by it, especially in the fourth game. But there are various modifiers to make it easier. So I'll, I'll try the level on hard and then inevitably fail. So you can turn on a modifier <laughs> to give you an extra life. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'll try to get with one life. And then if I'm able to do it, great. If not, you can turn on two lives and an extra super ability. So it's really fun in that way. Um, and so that's been... That's been a fun thing to experience on the Switch recently. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, inspired by you, I've gone back to try to beat my backlog. Um, oh. Finally, finally beat the uh, main. Um, campaign of splatoon 2 um, oh, nice wow. good and i i forgot how much i loved the first game and the first campaign and uh i mean it's all you know splatoon's a game seems all around music and the final boss in both games is mm-hmm. it's just so fun and it's like you're at a basically like at a pop concert um, right and it's also got that kind of like platforming style of boss fights that you'd get out of a Mario game with all the like yeah, same, it's a little like, galaxy-ish color. with like the shooting from yeah. platform to platform. So it's uh that was oh that was so fun. I put on my like my best headphones and just like kind of rocked out to it. I'm like wow, this is like I'm just enjoying the music way more than anything. And the reason I tried to play through that is because I also bought the Octo expansion two or three years ago and had not <laughs> gotten to it. So now I'm, pl- I'm playing through the Octo expansion for Splatoon 2, uh, where you get to play as an Octoling for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, by buying it, you get to play as an Octoling in-game, like uh, like online with friends. So um, I'm playing through that. Um, I also have played, uh, recently downloaded Worms uh, World War. Uh, my, my brother, my older brother, huge Worms fan on the Dreamcast, and has been playing Worms, like the, the Worms franchise ever since. And both him and my younger brother are really good. And so, of course, they came out on Switch, and it's like the perfect, it's just like the perfect game. Like, it's got all the best stuff from all the other games, and it's now portable. So he's on there all the time, and he's oh, convinced wow. both my brother and I to, to jump on and, and play with those little little worms. So, um, but it's, 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 it's a fun little, you know, like, you know, tactic style yeah, game for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, yeah, there's otherwise, so many iterations to that. It seems perfect for that type of online oh, sure. play. Plus, who doesn't love just gaming's favorite mascot? Is a is a worm with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, not to, to bury the lead here, but obviously I want to jump into some news. And uh, one of the big things was uh, this week we got our first taste of Nintendo's approach to this like no E3 like dimension that we're living in. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, Paper Mario, the Origami King, got surprised announced, dropped via, I, I think, a Twitter slash YouTube uh, announcement. Uh, and it's coming July 17th. 
where Mario will be partnered with some, like, I guess a good origami like person by the name of Olivia to try to take down the rest of the evil origami people that have infested Paper Mario's world. Um, mm -hmm. And there have, mm -hmm. it has been confirmed that she'll team up with the likes of Toad and they even showed off uh, Bowser. Great, Toad! <laughs> and maybe a bob -omb. Um, maybe uh, maybe a magic Koopa, which is a pretty big deal. I'm yeah, those would be good. That. Those are good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, they also revealed that this like a thousand fold arm ability, where <laughs> Mario gets a, like a ton of arms, a la like a straw. Yeah, that I got, he I got like, some thoughts like... on the thousand fold <laughs> arm. <laughs> so let's talk about it. What are your thoughts, Austin? Okay, so let me just frame it like this. A few episodes ago, we chatted because there was the you know the rumor, which now has been given credibility, that there's going to be a lot of Mario games coming out this year to celebrate, I believe, the 35th anniversary. And so, um, as such, we talked about Paper Mario at the time, and what I'd said was that, you know, now the Switch is Nintendo, of course, firing on all all cylinders, and they're at the top of their game, at least more so than they've been in a great while. So, but I was wondering, and I feel like Paper Mario is this like test case where is it, um is this truly Nintendo making all the right decisions or is it like a, just a perfect uh, storm somewhat of they did make a great decision with the switch and breath of the wild. And it's just given them a lot of momentum and a lot of gamers that have, you know, chosen to try the switch who are positive about it, but it's still the same core Nintendo making the goofy decisions in the background uh, that haunt us to this day. And so it, basically is Paper Mario going to be like, do they get what people want in Paper Mario? Is it going to be that return to form or is it going to be another like experiment right, in the way Sticker Star and Color Splash were that were you know largely criticized? Um, and you know, do they do they understand what works, or are they kind of stumbling upon? Yeah, something? it's like you know now we we have Animal Crossing, we have Zelda, we've had a, an amazing Mario game. You've got right. uh, the young team with Splatoon, and of course Smash, Mario Kart Luke's Mansion, Eight was great like, for sure. Like there definitely been a lot of hits, but I feel like in a lot of those games, like Animal Crossing, for example. Like it still has a, a a goofy online, you know, visiting structure and all these like little weird, you know, little weird Nintendo things like Smash joining a lobby and joining a friend's lobby and like being able to play multiple people versus your friends. Like it's not super possible, like in just, you know, just like, oh, like my account and a friend are going to play right. you and a friend. Not possible. Like Splatoon matchmaking. It's like you got to let a friend join a match and then try to join on them. And like yeah. there's still all of these issues that are always underpinned. Even Mario Kart's pretty tough. Yeah, they undercut like the great ideas. And so is Paper Mario going to be a great idea or is it going to be another like 70% of a great idea and then like 30% falling on their face? And I will say, I think I'm more skeptical than most of the reactions have been having seen the trailer. I'm t I am excited to play it, uh, Matt. And all three of us have pre-ordered it. Yep. yep. <laughs> okay, good. All of us have, so I'm on board. But um. Let's, the uh, problem. <laughs> let's dig into the trailer. I just feel, okay, so what I would like, I would like, of course, a return to form RPG like the first two games, right? That is the cute humor that will definitely yeah. be here and art style that then has like a fun RPG system that's not overtly complex, but you meet great sidekick characters that you yeah, don't encounter anywhere else in the Mario universe, right? I scoff at the Toads because these games are full of the most recent ones. Just generic, full of Toads. Colorful like, Toads. So generic. Like my love for Toad is at an all-time well, low. Toad, I like Captain Toad, but Toad. I like Captain Toad, and I like <laughs> Super Mario Sunshine Old Toad, but to Professor Toadsworth, Toad's Toadsworth, is that it? Toadstool? But I don't. Um, Toadsworth. Oh yeah, Princess Toadsworth. Toadstool, and it's Mister Mister Toadsworth. Um, the but I just feel like like for example in Paper Jam, which was a Mario and Luigi game, but Paper Mario was one of the starring characters, like. Uh, it had the fun combat of Mario and Luigi and RPG systems, but then every area it was like, well, before you leave this area, I need you to find these like 15 toads that are hidden around this space. And it just, everything goes to a crawl. It's way too chatty. Like um, the game's constantly over explaining itself. Like, and uh, so in the case of this, the big question is the battle system. So what did, what did you two think seeing the footage of the battle system? So I'm cautiously optimistic, but my perspective is that I only played the first one and Thousand Year Door, and then I just like skipped out on having to be disappointed by avoiding all move. of the other ones. Yeah. Um, Paper Mario was the first 
game that I ever beat by myself as a kid. So I just like have so much love for Paper Mario, and awesome. I just believe it only ended with Thousand Year Door, and there's no other one. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think the battle system looks neat, and I am excited to like see more of it. I do have a lot of questions because we we really only have like one snippet of seeing the battle system and like yeah. the, the like new puzzle uh, mechanic dial. of lining things, yeah. the characters up and something about where you can buy more time but you have like only 30 seconds yeah, to yeah, yeah. align everything yeah it's very turn based am i right it's one of those <laughs> maybe we're the first but my um, first reactions were like do you have badges in this game yeah. like why don't you have any flower points why don't you have a sidekick that's also fighting with you so i think right. we're just missing a lot of the the pieces um but i think it those are worries could be me. good yeah I would say, like, in, in Sticker Star, you had to equip, base, you had to use an item to use a move, and those moves were stickers, mm. right? And so in this, at least, yeah. it looks like you have your standard attack moves. So that's a step in the right direction. But you're right, we don't see a partner. We're, what's a and um, Matt, maybe you, what's a and official stance on Super Paper Mario? Where are we landing I played, on yeah, I played, I played Super Paper Mario. Yeah, I, I beat the- it, and I definitely liked it at the time. I, lo- I, lo- I liked it at the time, but I had also played Thousand Year Door, and I remember thinking, like, this looks really nice, but it also wasn't, I, it, I mean, it wasn't as fun, obviously, but I still liked how funny it was, and I liked that it was like a little Mario RPG. I yeah, mean, it, was I, it was funny. It had a lot of personality, for sure. For, su- for uh, Super Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, I think, is the gold right. standard across the series, as right. it, like, is great, great sidekicks, fun story, fun, like, playing as the villain, and, all, like, it had tons of surprises. Super Paper Mario maintained a lot of that, but now it's hard not to see it as like the canary in the coal mine for Paper Mario losing its way yeah. for a couple of years. It was a not very interesting action platformer kind of, and but with platforming that was kind of boring. Well, it 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 was very much the Wii game. Like that yeah. was like the Wii platform. It's blue ocean strategy, like Mario Party for or Mario uh, Paper Mario for everyone. You know, like and it felt yeah. like. You know, Jordan, your experience is probably not unlike a lot a lot of the mm. stories I've heard from many of my friends and family who've basically left Nintendo at GameCube and have come back now with Switch. Mm-hmm. And like we I mentioned earlier, like it just seems like it seems like maybe they're listening. All their like beloved franchises are eyeing once more, you know, and doing all the right things, at least seemingly. And then you know, you've you've also have games like you know, uh, you know, Yoshi's Crafted World and some other some other games that are a little more like, you know, franchises that have lost their way, but they make yeah. Can I jump jump into that really of. fast? Like I sure. on their backlogs, I did just finish Yoshi's Crafted World, and uh, and I really was like hate playing it by the end. It's not a bad <laughs> game, and it looks beautiful for sure. Like it's Unreal Engine four now. We've of course seen five for the PS five, but the it looks really sharp. It has a great looking um, aesthetic, but it's like painfully easy. It's and the the few moments that are like really clever are like the boss fights, of which there are very few. And though the game gets a little more challenging, a little more interesting, and there's also like a very spooky, actually, uh, Jordan's like horror <laughs> level at the end, where there are like these clowns with axes. I kid you not that chase you throughout the level and you have to like stand in the light to get them to go away. Not kidding. This is like a real oh, no. Yoshi <laughs> mechanic. And I was like very delighted by it only because I'm like, this is so different than everything else in this game. But that game has one song in it. You one it song. The entire time. <laughs> that is the entire game. And there are slight variants where, but basically the, all the variants come down to playing that song more slowly and then emphasizing different notes that are like, oh, this one's more like feudal Japan, slightly themed. And so it's like there's more maybe uh, maybe more of like a strings element to some of it. And it's just like, ah, oh. but it's the exact same tune. It's so grating and awful. Like the the game is cute, but it does nothing interesting. And I feel it's definitely the same way about Kirby uh, Star Allies, which I also finished this year. And I was just I was just getting through it for the sake of getting through it. Like there's no new ideas. I hope Paper Mario brings it. Because I yeah. like that world, and I thought the trailer was funny. I like. The, I like the trailer the was funny. Conversation. And it the, was funny, and there was a lot to like in the trailer. Like there were yeah. some cool elements in the background right. of like, like paper mache bad guys, and like the whole like sailing mechanics that looked yeah, like it could be like Wind Wakery or like some different things that they're trying that I'm I'm hopeful will. The perspective was very different. Like it had almost more of an isometric look to it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, because traditionally these games have been 2D, hence the Paper Mario element. Mm-hmm. And then Super Paper Mario, you would go into the screen and you turn yeah, the remote. Is very but much this about is like, like turning different. the yeah yeah. So I wonder. Um, hopefully, they managed to find ways to surprise us with the view. But I, there was a lot to like for sure in the trailer. Like, and now I, they at the end of the trailer, right? They showed that little that little Easter egg with the you know Samus mm-hmm. helmet. What are, what are your what are your takes on that? Is that just to kind of throw a bone to Nintendo fans? Is that you can you yeah, can I use think, an amiibo to get uh, <laughs> I a helmet? I don't think it's that. I think they're so far past the the you know the toys to life, and I think especially now in a COVID era where it's hard to get to the store and GameStop isn't open, and I mean the physical goods have got to be just you know there's got to be no interest in really promoting that as a as a brand. Amiibo's really a trickle now of. Right. Super, so do you uh, think it, you think it's just like a little Nintendo Easter egg I think it's a fun nod. within if, the game or is it a nod at something to come? Well, we know we will Metro Prime 4, so I think it's just a cute little like we haven't forgotten about Metroid. If you right. remember in the original Paper Mario, when you go into the Toad Town, you can talk to one of the Toads who's like, hey, I've heard I'm playing this cool game called Fire Emblem and things of that ilk. So they do have yeah. a legacy of like referencing fourth wall breaking games. And I mm. see that is this, although it's a little cruel of them, I feel, to put it in the trailer at the end. Versus like just a cool Easter egg in the game where it's like, oh, it does make it suggest that there's more story here, but I do not oh, think yeah. there is. But I love the idea of Mario yeah. running out using his hand as a fake blaster. That was, that was fun. <laughs> well, um, and also I'll say that the trailer felt very like choppy, you know, it just kind of it felt like so much was thrown at you. And it was kind of it was initially like hard to follow. I remember when it started, I, I didn't think it like looked that great initially. Um, but then, I mean, as it got going, it lo- I mean, it looks, it looks very cute. I, I still want to play um, Color Splash. I really wish they would have brought that game to the Switch. I'm, I'm it's a weird surprised. one they didn't, yeah. Right. Um, I know. I'm like, I know if- it's a, really people hated the, the combat and all that element, but, um, and I did not play Color Splash either, so I'm just working off of... I the- mean, it's the same. It was almost the same battle system as Sticker Star, and Sticker right? Star, which I mean, is the, yeah. M- beginning of the so end you had to go like so. find your paint ink um so. but i am surprised but then then again it's like i do suspect we're gonna get a 3d world at some point this year that's probably going to be 60 dollars. so it's like i'm glad they haven't done this to color splash because i don't think they you know they're not putting out like wii u selects or <laughs> they, like which that, they should you know, be and which you wish they would but at this point like every wii u game's on there so it'd be like what it would be just paper mario like what else even is there <laughs> you know um back on the wii there were the gamecube games there's pikmin 2 and um, some of the Mario sports games that came back as on the Wii as like, on the Wii, yeah, that's right. Know, yeah, it was cool to play Pikmin games. one and two with the Wii mode. Yeah, which uh, was prior awesome. Prior to Pikmin three coming out, um, so but we're not saying that here. So speaking of speaking of like what's to come, right? So <laughs> yeah. the the gentleman who <laughs> actually start kind of founded the rumors um, from from Venture Beat, you know, he he had claimed that like the stuff was coming, that a Paper Mario was coming. Um, so, you know, recently he reported, he said earlier this month, I reported Nintendo isn't planning on a direct for June. Um, as an update to that, I'll add that Nintendo isn't planning a direct at all for now. It's telling development partners not to, to wait for a direct, even if they have a big announcement. So we're going to see probably other developers just coming out with their own announcements at their own, on their own times. But he also says, as for uh, first party games, expect Nintendo to repeat its Paper Mario Origami King strategy. And what's coming, according to him, is Pikmin 3 Deluxe, 3D Mario Remasters, and Super Mario 3D World Deluxe. Uh, it could have some surprises beyond that, but it may wait for those until it can start doing directs again. So, th- I mean, th- obviously this, the announcement gave credence to the rumor from the beginning. So what do, what do you think? Is, is Nintendo going to give us, was that their big announcement without a direct and the rest of the non-direct announcements are just going to be these like, deluxe games you know past games and then they're going to save all the big stuff and new stuff for a future direct sounds pretty logical to me sounds like it's that's probably what's going to happen throughout the summer but i'm not sure when do you think these are going to come out like when do you think this these mario games are going to come out i don't know (laughs) (laughs) Um, i'm I'm less of like a uh Chunky for following Nintendo news like this, so I will defer to your guys. Um, I expertise I just here. think uh, you know it is surprising. We talked about it in a previous episode, you know, E three canceled, but I think all of us were like, well, Nintendo's got this digital thing down; it shouldn't really affect them. Then to see them canceled was you know a surprise. 
And I think it just speaks to the slow delay and um, timeline kind of decay of a lot of these things that we're going to start seeing now and see for many months to come. I think the direct certainly takes many people to put it together, whether that's people making deals with indies to say, hey, do you mind if we do a you know day and date release with this announcement or, you know, the number of people that have to uh, just get together, even if they're these things are largely filmed in front of a green screen and seemingly it's a small crew. I think it's just it's too much. They have they have other priorities. They have other concerns. And we're going to see this type of, I think, delay through most of the year. Um, and this is just kind of the start of it. You know, things that weren't already uh, in the hopper to some degree, probably like this, are just going to be, I think, trickled out very slowly um, by by virtue of how long it takes for people to more individually put this stuff together and check all the boxes. And so I certainly think we'll get more directs. I'm sure there'll be another direct. I mean, provided we don't have a terrible COVID relapse, like I think we'll get a new, we'll get more directs in 2020, but I think it'll be a while. Right. And I think from a competition standpoint, they probably don't see, you know, the Switch is killing it as far as sales, as is Animal Crossing. So for them, is there a big interest to come out kind of alone on the stage right now and with a bunch of game announcements? The Switch is still impossible to buy. Like if you, I've, Warrior 64 I've talked about before, but is a great resource on Twitter for posting deals and when things go up on Amazon and um, getting those Twitter messages are, is how I am notified to a lot of things that happen in the industry. And the Switch, he'll post something and a minute later he'll say it's out of stock or like mm. your results may vary. Like they don't, Nintendo has no interest or need, I guess, in coming out with a big heavy slate when the people's situation at the moment totally promotes, you know, playing the switch staying largely indoors um yep you know the disposable income is going to be a question mark you know for all of us for a while mm. and like the uh it's just going to be right and, and, and i stuff. almost wonder if if you know this kind of all you know and with all due respect to everything that's going on right now i think that i wonder if this is happening at a good time for nintendo where this year really wasn't going to be a major game announcement year anyways um and they're yeah. resting on their laurels of of you know a big party first party title like animal crossing and then you know this i feel like this is around the life cycle we start to see like the paper marios and like you know sure. the, eventually a kirby game is going to show up and Again, like right. maybe a metroid game um he'll but come, he'll come I, with his scythe and and take you to the <laughs> early gates but yes agreed like paper mario sticker star and uh, color splash were late cycle games for those yeah. respective systems and um i don't think we're late in the switch's lifespan i do think we'll see a pro at some point but i think i wouldn't be surprised now like all the rumors are pointing to a mario collection i think that is something we can expect for a holiday release but i'm starting to think that given everything that's going to be the big release you know will be some yeah. type of remaster on 64 sunshine and galaxy and so i pay, uh, no one is talking about breath of the wild 2 coming out this year i do not see that happening I wouldn't be surprised if in 2021 we get some type of Switch Pro that coincides with the Breath of the Wild release. Um, I mean, th th that's what I'm going to say, because if you think about the summer of 2019, right, you had a ton, a ton of games. You, you yeah. mean, Fire Emblem started off like late summer, and then you had Damon X Machina and Astral Chain, mm -hmm. and then later Luigi's Mansion. You also had Legend of Zelda. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, Pokemon, and then Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> exactly. So it was like yeah. a huge slate and this of whole these, time. So, there was Smash DLC. Like there's been a, yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's weird to think that th that same slate's going to be filled with like games you've already played, maybe. But yeah. now, and like your handheld like Switch console. So I don't know. I'm I'm still expecting like I. I where's pikmin 4 like this would be a great time for the like pikmin 4 to show up i guess maybe i don't know unless the switch is actually in its middle of its life cycle per their recent um you know uh, uh shareholder meeting yeah like uh, you know pikmin 4 it's not gonna move it's especially not gonna move consoles now like if people can't buy consoles just to play animal crossing right now like why bring out one of you know miyamoto's ip it's not gonna tip that's scales. True. like it makes more sense for them to sit on it and then you know, how this fall shakes out for Xbox and PlayStation is still a little bit of a question. You know, Xbox seems more likely they're going to pull it together, but we don't know with what games necessarily. Like, and PlayStation's more of a mystery. 
And so, you know, that would be a time where I could see them being like, hey, we do have these Mario games you loved and maybe a new Pikmin or the very least Pikmin 3 again and trying (laughs) to do something to kind of get some Nintendo attention during the fall if those consoles come out. But they don't know. And so I think Nintendo's not going to rush to play their hand first. They know we're all going to buy 51 versions of <laughs> they, <laughs> they know we already Solitaire. have bought it <laughs> yes we have so can't um, wait to play chinese checkers which if you watched the last trailer didn't actually originate didn't, in China. i loved the tra- i loved in that trailer when they go through each game which is like very much like the smash bros like here's 50 facts about smash bros like four and you know it's going through everything and this is just like uh you know checkers it's like jump your opponents to win and i was like oh that's interesting that's like the most interesting trivia they got on <laughs> checkers like probably the most second most iconic board game of all time i'm gonna put chess first i guess hopefully that's not a hot take and then but yeah but then the <laughs> ones where they actually did choose to share something interesting with the yeah chinese checkers actually like originated in europe or whatever it was and i was like oh that is actually interesting but uh funny with the things they chose to emphasize like mahjong like days back they think you know over two million years or something things to that effect and then it's uh you know, this like this game is basically sorry, but it's not like <laughs> the, the <laughs> other games. They're just like had no information. Uh, oh you know. yeah, and Spider yeah. Solitaire four and, like, in a row. Other, <laughs> four in a row. Yes, the old can't wait. The to old connect four, four in a row. row. <laughs> right, it's very like color TV system twelve or whatever. Like the Pong. Look, if I is. can play four in a row online with someone, which I better because they didn't they didn't confirm. They which did games not were talk online. about that. And I'm coming off no. of an Ori party where you can't even play that board game online fully with people. <laughs> I don't know about this one, uh, but it does look good. Mario Party online would have saved. Uh, would have would have would have won the video. That game is like that game is its own little post mortem. It would be perfect. It would be so perfect right now. In fact, screw all the other games coming out this year. Just announced Mario Party. (laughs) Mario Party is another example of Nintendo goofing. You know, Nintendo like is Nintendo on firing all cylinders, or they get lucky a few times and they're goofing still. And that's more of the latter. Like that game is so botched, it falls in the camp of like the crafted world and uh all star or star allies and you know they're fine they're fine games like they're not by any means bad games but they're just not inventive and they feel behind the times and they feel like an old you know nintendo and i think matt you bring up an interesting point just about like are people content to play games they have played before like let, let's talk briefly about the big games of 2020 so far like we had tokyo mirage sessions at the beginning of the year right that's a mm-hmm. remastered game animal crossing is a huge hit and total big endeavor so that's definitely you know a huge win for Nintendo, and there's no takeaway right. from that. But we Tokyo Mirage Sessions. We're about to get 51 board games, so an update of a, of a DS game, which is exciting and fun. Cl- Xenoblade comes Clubhouse out at the games. end of the month with an epilogue yes. DLC, which I think could be very exciting and cool. And um, they're definitely positioning that franchise. In, uh, you know, but that's a remaster. Hours. That's a third release of that game uh, yeah. that's seen you know a Wii and new 3DS release. And then we have this and possibly a, a year of mario remasters and pikmin it does feel you know sparse it's very sparse yeah but it's okay because you have your island to live on yeah (laughs) for sure it's a good time for the backlog and animal crossing's huge and i'm excited for paper mario i want to touch paper mario one more time i don't want to totally drag us back but i do want to say this the thousand fold arm i my (laughs) worry with this when i see that do I have any problem with Mario with goofy, lanky Kong arms, you know, and that are folding and whatever? No, that's that's fine. But when I see it, but when it's advertised, this is just what makes me nervous. And that's why I'm so passionate. When I see it advertised as like a back of the box thing, you know, that yeah, is when I'm like, like, why is this I'm like, the only you, power? Up? Why is we this shouldn't be the focusing on this. Thing. Like, it's fine. It's fine. I don't have any issue with thousand arms. But it's just like when it's like, and Mario's got this cool ability. It's like if they knew what people were so like skeptical of with Mario, Paper Mario, or wanted, what they would say is like, and a return to turn-based, you know, battle systems that invoke right. the classic Paper Mario series of the past. Like that is the strap line. Not like we're gonna have this definitely like context sensitive like you're not gonna be <laughs> thousand fold arming up and down the street. You're gonna go to like it oh the ladder's like too you high. Might be. You're gonna like the ladder's too high. I got to hit this button. Like, it's going to be that. And so it's, again, no problem with that. But it's like, when that's the feature, it makes me want, like, hey, do you guys know, like, the concern, what people want out of this is a classic Paper Mario game. Like, it's fine if he's got a lot of arm, but, like, 
the concern here <laughs> is whether or not it is faithful to the game we love. So let's emphasize those things. Like a great trailer would have been okay. Like here's the battle system. Do you think this is the only like like gimmick? Is you know you mean Mario has folded if, into like, all kinds of different if, things. If he's got three thousand, if he's got the sticker gimmick again the or the color splash gimmick, however even that works, that's fine. I don't mind that. But it, it's my concern is like it needs to have the RPG mechanics in the battle system because that is what people thirst for. That's what yeah. everyone's excited about. So when they bring any attention to anything that is not that, then I'm like, ooh, is the RPG mechanic going to be worth mentioning? You know, like, yeah, maybe it's not. There's no, the partners, okay? I'm excited. I mean, the game is also, it's I, always I, about its writing it. so, and its humor. Like, that's a big component, but at the same yeah, time, and those are good. not but what like, made it. Okay, the partners. That's what made it charming, Let's talk about partners really fast. Because it was already so good. I'm no origami expert, okay? I played Heavy Rain back on the PS3. If anyone gets that reference, origami killer in that game, very spooky. Good time, good oh. couple game, Jordan. The I played the demo. I'm no expert at um at origami, but all the partners on display are just pieces of paper with a single fold or whatever. Like they're very simple designs. Like <laughs> when I think origami, I at least think something 3D. Is that a crazy assumption? No, like, I think of the swan, origami, obviously. You, you so, can fold a lot then, of things. Like, no diss on Origami 3D. Peach, who seems spooky and totally fun. But, like, that design does not invoke anything special to me. Like, it's a very... It's just not a flat paper peach. Like, with less detail. Like, the partners that are just, like... It's a... Uh, it, it looks like a, it's just a triangular fold, folded buddy. Like, I think if people, if you're listening and you're like, I'm really dunking on origami needlessly, like, the partners look very simple, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The partners in Thousand Year Door I have tons of personality. You have bob Omb that's an old sea dog, you know, who's like, the fuse represents, like, his, you know, that old, his attitude of uh, being, yeah. being on the high seas, like... And you have Goombas that are, oh, this is a friend Goomba. And she's, you know, she also has an archaeology helmet on because she researches things and can scan enemies for you. Like, they were very illustrative and memorable. It's a baby Yoshi, like, we've, that has, like, cool punk rock hair and an egg mm-hmm. diaper. Like, we haven't seen that design ever again. Like, no. those are cool. Super Paper Mario, your buddy is, like, the Wii cursor. And it looks, look <laughs> back at that guy. He looks exactly like the partner things in this. It's, like, a very simple geometric like yeah totally is, not a strict it, you're you're scaring me just yeah i feel like you scared and that's what I'm quashed my, have, uh, have i purely been, yes, there's probably a lot to be excited about and i'm also being i already know i'm being too negative about it but it's like but these are the things where i think especially as people are like it's awesome it's back i'm like whoo let me get my thousand fold arms out there because i am there are thousand fold arms just waving in the wind waving for help and <laughs> i i these are just concerns i have well, yeah. we've all already paid for it. For and sure. We'll, I'm sure. And if we'll there's DLC or season pass, I'll buy it. No worries. But like, <laughs> yeah, it's just I, the humor is there. It'll look great. It'll totally be cute and fun. I just hope they know what people want. And when they advertise thousand fold arms, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that's all okay. that's all very valid i will say that it was like a like the highlight of my week that they made this announcement for sure so it, and we'll, see, turn, if, and we'll and see if the game lives up to the hype but, like, we hope now but, more I, than but ever, I do feel I don't, like the, right. the nostalgia that they're invoking by announcing sure. it and then not only they announce it surprisingly but we get it in two months like right that's what awesome i think people need it right now and so every time i see that icon on the switch it. totally excited i've watched a trailer a bunch of times and i i often find that like the cute like Treehouse is an amazing localization team, um, and they do inc- incredible work across the board. And in these games, like whether it's Treehouse or Intelligent Systems with uh, Mario and Luigi, or like sometimes I feel like okay, the sometimes this humor works for me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's a little bit maybe this is chatty. Like there's humor here, but there's a lot of other text, and I don't always. Sometimes it just gets buried. And at least in the trailer, like perfect balance of like mm-hmm. I I thought the writing was funny. And it does not always get me as funny. Like, uh, Crafted World has mom- total mo- moments of humor, but they're few and far between. I wasn't, like, laughing aloud. I actually thought it was, like, I was excited about what I saw in this trailer. So there's going to be at least that. But it's like, uh, they're on this dial, and it's like, buy more time for the dial. And the dial isn't really aesthetically super attractive, at least to me. Like, I'm not looking at the dial like, oh, this is, like, a beautiful battle. Like, it looks like there's a gimmick here. Is this, do they know what the co- what the core root of the good battle is i guess we're gonna find out 
I think that's it, all very valid. Also, if you pay attention to the amount of coins that Mario has, like a lot throughout all the screenshots that they show, or all this, yeah. the frames they show you, you get so many coins. Yeah. It's truly the the level of inflation. Like I don't even want to know how much a, a <laughs> fire a flower is going to for... cost. Yes. In this new game, but I I so I feel like the buying more time is probably a large yeah like and part and that of could the be mechanic. like great and the arms could be great. It's just like I want the core to be what people love. Yeah. Myself Bad. clearly included. And that's where I'm like, ooh, I would focus on that if I if I were the, they. But uh I but yeah, the coins is a cool is a cool detail, like and could be exciting use of a system that's I'm really seeing a uh, screenshot here and there's a toad um like kind of like on a little like log ride down a river and he's like ferrying like mario and the little bob person and uh olivia the origami the good origami little person yeah but the toad is wearing a hat <laughs> so we, that's probably there you go. Different. that's a step in the right direction yeah. but it does bring up the spooky lore of is toad's head a hat <laughs> because we've been <laughs> also, back and forth on this did before you notice there are like toads with no faces yes in they're in like the a disco they've released like what is happening with that i don't know there's a lot I don't know, but there's Contact. an old from the Super Mario TV show, an old image of Toad where he's not wearing the mushroom part and he just has like a curly Q baby hair. No. And you once you see that, there's no going back. That's Paradise Lost, baby. Obviously, they should have hats, <laughs> but Captain Toad's got a hard hat and there's we've already talked about hats. So I'm, I have faith in them there. They're going to be fine there. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay well we all can't wait to find out whether or not this is a, a, a true return to form or not otherwise um we're gonna move on the thing about the full <laughs> for our hopes and dreams <laughs> austin um i thought well uh we're gonna i have one more story then we're gonna end on a, a fun little game so um i thought this was cool uh it came out this week that an ex uh, retro employee uh sammy hall um I think like on a, either a blog post or something, um, or some some forum or web on some website. We'll put, we'll put the link in the in the yeah. notes for the show. And I just sent it to you all in the um, in the Skype chat here. But if Thank you want you. to check out the photos, but basically, um, he posted some some concept art that he was tasked with coming up with and creating uh, back in the day when working with Retro around two specific types of games. One was a like an action JRPG focused like Zelda spinoff where you play as Sheik as they attempt to thwart a faction of a like of a, like a dark Gerudo like tribe who are trying to basically ritual birth Ganondorf. <laughs> um, All right, I'm interested. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a like like you know the like creepy Majora's Masky kind of spinoff that a lot of Zelda fans really want, and we're hoping to get in the next Breath of the Wild game. But uh, the concept art is super cool and also very bizarre looking, and it's it just brings up like like I, so many people. I feel like I would still I would absolutely buy this game. Like you throw Legend of Zelda on it, and Zelda's sure. the franchise you can give. Oh. A lot take a lot of different artistic directions with, and because they've, I mean, they've done that yeah. in the past, and so it was just really cool to see this guy's take on what this kind of a spinoff Zelda game could look like. Um, and then there was another game which was way more cute, and I think uh, also a game I would absolutely buy, and it was about a boo. Um, mm. And the artwork is indicating that the game would follow like a young King Boo. As he goes through Haunt University, this is just like a Pixar movie, basically. Yeah, this is like it's monster. It's monsters you. And I wonder, but like I, I mean, Nintendo. You know, I feel like I love it. This is up their alley. Like before Monsters University came out, I'm sure. sure. Also, like Monsters U has not put like it isn't like closed the door on like all right, all all fun monster based school things are over now because Monsters U knocked it out of the park. That said, (laughs) right, this is a Monsters University household. I did like it. As, as did my mother, and we do support it. So I do want to stay on the record. We do like Monster University. You, you bought the sweatshirt. You rock. Of course, the hat. I bought the sweatshirt. I love on that one. I do day. have the hat. I love um, that monster that has the. It's just like purple. It's just like purple U shape, and that's basically all there is to him. But he's cute. He's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, I thought I thought this was so so cool and so interesting, and it kind of is like a reminder of he he goes on to note that Nintendo you know, he's like oh the 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 like the top brass in Nintendo probably never saw these you know yeah. but it's just cool to think of how met how much 
concept art and like how how much of this there is. You have to think Nintendo's, Nintendo's hit studios. with this stuff frequently, you know, by especially by these yeah. probably beloved developers who want to take a stab at a cool, you know, ever these are all creative people and whether it's retro or otherwise. I bet there's so much artwork that has these types of dreams. Um, you know, I'd love to see I would love to see any of this. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that was a pretty cool story and it just got me excited for it just reminded me how creative Nintendo can get. And I would love to see like that they're thinking of like, how do we take, you know, a beloved genre and try to put a fun twist on it and then goof it up? I know you wonder <laughs> yeah, how much but... of this like is it more common that some like retro, which comes out of Austin, like, right. Do they do they pitch more zany ideas and then they're like, oh, don't you know, don't hit Nintendo with this boo grown up story like they're not going to go for it or you know, what is internal Nintendo look like or, but then we get things like Splatoon, which is totally weird. And it's been, you know, such a hit. So, uh, or like Link's Awakening with that really amazing, like doll, dollhouse look. Um, so, but yeah, all the weird stuff. Love that. Love that. And like this, the art for those not seeing the images now, it's kind of, it's like a Twilight Princess doubled down. And then maybe you imagine had like a, an engine that could really do that art style justice. Like, that really just looks you know, dream nightmarish and cool abstractions of these characters, these classic Zelda enemies you already know, looking more fa- high fantasy. Um, I love that idea. Yeah. All right, you ready for to end this podcast in a in a in a with a game i guess <laughs> okay when i do poorly i'm gonna cut this from the episode so <laughs> uh so basically the, i thought it'd be fun to kind of close this out with a little quiz um the world's been playing animal crossing and whether or not uh you know uh, you've been playing a lot or a little i think you can probably still play this game um as i've been playing i've been thinking about how an Animal Crossing trivia would just be so fun. Um, and I've been trying to build it out more, but I only, I took a very small part of what I've been doing and uh, condensed it just for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you five each, I'm gonna both, ask you both five questions and I'm gonna have you text me your answer and I'm gonna read out loud who got one, each one right, okay? I don't oh, want you blurting no. out the answers, um, but I will, cause I'll say them, I'll say them uh, as you, as you text them to me. So kind of like a trivia, you know, imagine you're at a bar and, I'm just the MC for the night. So Jordan, yeah, try to try to remember back to when that was like a viable thing you could do for pleasure. <laughs> uh, Jordan, you ready? I am ready. And Austin, you ready? I'm afraid so. All right, this is from the uh, the fish section of the trivia. Okay, I'm going to give you the tagline for when you catch said fish, and I am not going to include the fish name. And based on the fun little puns that the treehouse have have mm-hmm. you know put together for us you're gonna have to remember or guess said fish name by texting it to me uh if you text if it's first not about it to be right, sea bass i'm effed but go for it <laughs> <laughs> so we got five questions here first one you know imagine a little like noise uh i caught a blank the most metal of all fish text me now i caught a blank the most metal of all fish. And the first text was from Jordan. And the Jordan says, I haven't gotten a text from Austin yet. Jordan said, <laughs> black bass. And that is correct. It is the black Yay! bass. Nice. One point for Jordan. No points for Austin. who has. I didn't even want it. <laughs> all right. The next fish. I caught a blank. Five more and I'll have a guitar fish. I caught a blank. Five more, and I'll have a guitar fish. And now that's question two. I'll go to question three. You can continue to text me. The third one is, I caught a blank. I didn't know why. I don't know why it's so shy or such a bad speller. I caught a blank. I don't know why it's so shy or such a bad speller. These are so wasted oh, on me but i, I know love that you've one. done this I game i can picture catching it it's been I, I, my relationship with animal crossing was like a, a hot and fast uh 
burn. I played it I hope aggressively, our, if our anyone... and I haven't played it in a, in a month now. <laughs> if um, anyone is listening this far, I hope you're enjoying this uh, and maybe playing along. Um, now, can I just hit you with a quick, quick idea? We can cut sure. this. Too. This is like an. We you should actually do this as like a little game show. And we should. Have I want to do that. Contest, That's what I want to do with the wider version. Contestants as their own ep- as their own episode. As its own oh, episode. for sure. Yeah, I want to do like the thirty question one as its own episode. Yeah, because I have I'll a lot of friends up. who are also. I'll study up for it. Yeah, who are also really into it, who would probably love and get rowdy about it. Oh, for sure. Then let's do it. Um, okay, and we're back. But are you sure you want to be spending the rest of these questions? Because we could oh, only save two more. these for game show. No, there's two more. Okay. Yeah, they're all fish. They're just fish questions. The uh, the last two are, I caught a blank. How many can fit in a carfish? I caught a blank. Oh, clownfish, clownfish. I'm sorry, clownfish. This is my only hope. Uh, (laughs) You yell clownfish. I I know, but I need this. God it. All right, I'm going to give it to both of you. I'm going to give... Very good. I just needed the audience to know that I knew (laughs) a fish. Jordan did text it. Still have one. The The last one is, I caught a blank. Listen to this fish. It's got a point. I caught a blank. Listen to this fish. It's got a point. Jordan Tech. Swordfish? Oh, it's not swordfish. Uh, That's good. Uh, but it's like, like a swordfish. Um, and the other two you missed were, I caught a blank. Five more and I'll have a guitar fish. And uh, the other one was, I-, I caught a blank. I don't know why it's so shy or such a bad speller. What fish would be shy? Flat <laughs> earther fish. <laughs> this is the one that's got a point. It's like, oh, you know, maybe it does. You know, it actually brings up some good points. Like, I haven't really, like, my when I jump, I land in the same place. Like, that seems pretty flat to me. <laughs> <laughs> there, There is the uh, olive flounder and the dab, which I guess are pretty flat. Maybe they'd be mm-hmm. flat. I got a dab in fish. my house. You come in there, you see an A&P cup, and you see a dab, and that's all you need. <laughs> All right, give All right. us the give us the I'm answer. I'm gonna give the answer. So uh, uh, I caught a string fish. Five uh, more, and I'll I, have a guitar fish. I don't think I've caught any of those. Um, the other one is I caught a um, koi fish. Oh, that's I right. don't know why that's it's right. so shy or such a bad speller. That's... The final one that wasn't uh, got, but you almost got it with a swordfish. There was I caught a marlin. Listen to uh... this fish. It's got a point. And those and that's are like our, Nemo uh, that's just a sample. Sure. If you want more, stay tuned for our next podcast. I want you two to study up. Yeah, I'm gonna come back ready play to play some rock games. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. just spend, you know spend a couple hours every day in Animal Crossing, specifically <laughs> fishing. They're all fishing. Open questions. your fish there aren't there any other and get in there. Wait, what are the other categories? No, there's categories? gonna be plenty, there's gonna be a bunch of categories. I okay. just yeah, um, this was just one I thought would be fun for the podcast. So um, trust me, there's an audio version a visual version there's all you're gonna want to watch this on our on our YouTube you can make channel, something so. out of this this is a really good this is a good party oh, game yeah, for this yeah, moment this, is, this, right should be this was one time. of my you heard it here first university. guys you heard it here first well whatever it happens you can uh play along or listen to it here at another nintendo podcast thanks for being here uh like and subscribe if you want otherwise don't share it with your moms um and your brothers uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, I've been Matt, and we've had Austin, and we've had Jordan, and uh, good night. Bye, Paper Mario. Bye, Paper <laughs> Mario. I'm the worst at the closing. Don't let me Paper do it. Paper Mario you just could do be it. bad. I just want to hop in there, maybe wait for a review. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>